With me today are Heather Andrews, Nurturing Coordinator and Resource Specialist of the Queen Anne County Department of Social Services, and Janine Beasley, Special Grants Manager at the Midshore Mental Health Systems. Uh, Heather, uh, well, welcome, ladies. Thank you. Heather, Thank you. can you explain how you fit in with Janine and uh, what your role is with her organization? Okay, through Mitchell Mental Health, they have the continuum of care, and they they hold the roundtable for homelessness uh, meetings once a month. And I am the Queen Anne's County Social Services representative on that committee. I also serve as the as an executive committee member as well. All right, very good, very good. Janine, can you tell us a little bit, or tell us however much you want about Midshore Mental Health and what goes on there? Sure, Midshore Mental Health Systems, we're the local core service agency for the five Midshore counties of the um, Eastern Shore. So what we do at Midshore is we oversee the public mental health system. But one of our roles is also to be the lead agency for our local continuum of care, which is our Midshore Roundtable. And what this local continuum of care does is we bring together all the homeless service providers in the area where we all come together to see if we can work together to really serve people who are affected by homelessness in the Midshore region. Are there a lot of people that are affected? Do you have any numbers that you can share with us? Sure. Each year we do what's called a point in time survey the last week of January. And this is where we choose one day in the last week of January to go out and try and survey all the people that are either homeless or in danger of becoming homeless in the area. Now we choose one day to do this because we're trying to get as accurate a count as possible. This is done nationally. So all local continuum of cares do a point in time survey and then their numbers get reported to HUD. So then it gets compiled on a national level and it gets uh, delivered to Congress and this information is how we get funding for homeless programs throughout the nation. Okay. So each year we do this. This year we found 111 people throughout the mid-shore that were uh, literally homeless on the night of Wednesday, January, I think it was the 30th this year, Wednesday, January 30th. Now when you say 111, is, that, is that families or is that individuals? Families and individuals Okay. that are homeless throughout the Midshore. So that means we had 111 people that were either staying in emergency cold weather shelters, that were in transitional housing, or were living on the streets on that night. Uh, what resources uh, are available for homeless people who have mental health issues? So there are emergency shelters. Uh, over the winter we have some great resources. Each county has a cold weather emergency shelter. Um, and then we also have some permanent year-round emergency shelters. There's one in Dorchester County through the Salvation Army. There's also one in Easton through a Neighborhood Service Center. But then we also have some permanent supported housing programs that are for people who are literally homeless and have mental health disabilities. So these are housing programs uh, that they can come into and qualify for that are permanent housing programs. What, what is the greatest misconception in the community about homelessness? Can you? Sure. I think one of the biggest mis misconceptions in the community is that we don't have homeless people in the midshore. And I think that's because we all have a picture of what homelessness looks like in our mind. And I think we all associate what urban homelessness looks like in our mind. We think of somebody who's out on the streets, visibly homeless, that we can kind of identify. Well, it looks a little different here on the shore. Um, that's because we have so many people who are either doubled up or couch surfing with friends and family. Um, we also have encampments that are hidden that we don't know about, that we don't exactly see. So while we, we still have this problem, it just looks a little different in our rural region than it does in an urban region. Yeah, I know personally my, my uh, perception of homeless was someone uh, on the streets of Baltimore, you know, mm -hmm. that was uh, sleeping on a heating grate or something. Exactly. You know? Um, but now you mentioned this couch surfing. Is mm -hmm. this, does this seem to be a prevalent uh, situation that people are just, they're homeless, but they find some place that they can lay their head for the night? We have that happen a lot in our region. We have people who just lack a regular nighttime fixed address. They're going from a friend's house to an aunt's house to an uncle's house, as long as they can stay there. But really, they don't have a home of their own. And a lot of times um, those family members are actually living in a low-income housing, so they are 
own the edge themselves if they you know if they find out that someone else is residing with them so that's another issue is a lot of the families the those individuals are staying with other individuals in low-income in housing that has restrictions that they could be on the street as well if things have if things exactly. came out to light mm -hmm. where does the funding come from to support your programs our funding comes from the Department of Housing and Urban Development um, through our continuum of care. So in order to get funding for our permanent supported housing programs, we have to have that local continuum of care, our Midshore Roundtable. And we apply for that yearly through a notice of funds availability. And that all goes back to the, your, your day that you count people that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it's based on how many people you're actually serving. Mm -hmm. Correct. And we went a little different this year. We were, you were able to get a grant, mm -hmm. correct? Um, I can't remember the amount, 5000 8000 We got, uh, it was $6,000 Six this thousand. year. Mm -hmm. To actually on that date um, or prior to, we had, we had picked some dates. Mm -hmm. I think the weather kind of hindered us a it little bit a this year. Winter. It was a bad winter. Um, but we actually picked sites that, that individuals and families could come to to complete the survey. And we also provided um, stipends mm -hmm. for those that came to complete. Okay. I was going to ask, you know, how do you go about finding these people to, you know, sure. to count them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So each year when we do a point in time survey, we always estimate that our numbers are much lower than they actually are because we have such a large region to count and we're so rural that going out and looking for people is very difficult. So like Heather said, this year we decided we were actually going to have some events where we um, held a central location where we could bring people in and try and get them in that way. And we think that's why our numbers were much higher this year than they've been in the past. So we think that through these events, we're getting at a much um, more accurate picture of what homelessness really looks like on the midshore. Well, are, you know, in a, uh, obviously that you feel like you're getting a better count, mm -hmm. but uh, are you seeing the numbers increase of homeless people because of the economic situation in our country right now? We are, had our largest point in time count in the last four years this year. Um, I think that some of that is due to having a more coordinated approach to that, but I also do think that numbers are increasing. Uh, that's a little scary. Mm -hmm. Heather, can you tell us uh, what your department's doing uh, to uh, make this make a difference day work here in Queen Anne County? I am co-chair with Candace Darling at Housing and Community Services, and between the two of us, um, we, and as well as Kathy Dordery, our director, and other community partners, we're pulling together. We um, started off, I know our first couple meetings were like last November, December, and we were just inviting all these community members to come in, and people were coming and going, and you know, the next meeting you had all these other ones coming in, and you're trying to get things organized, but we finally got to the point where we have the planning team and then we have the subcommittees. We have about 10 or so subcommittees that we identified, um, such as the finance, uh, there's one for basic needs, there are one for health related resources, which Janine has gracious, gracious, graciously accepted the chair position for the health services. Um, and she has her members that she contacts during the month and then monthly this chairs actually meet and we come together and we discuss what has gone through but you know they do have some things that they need to follow things they need to check on and they would just report back once a month. We are having a full community partner meeting on June the 19th at Social Services at 9 a.m. So we're gonna pull everyone together, see where we stand, what we still need to accomplish. It's, um, it's quite a big task to pull all these resources together for one day and we don't wanna make it like, hi, here you are, here's your list, make your phone call, see you later. Mm -hmm. It's, we're gonna sit down and you are actually gonna see the dentist today you're actually going to get a haircut. You're going to work oh, with that nair. Great. Yes, so we're going to go through that intake form, um, the services that they need, and the escorts are going to take them where they need to go. We'll provide lunch. Um, we have it at the Kramer Center. We'll have basic needs. The Goodwill Volunteer Fire Department will have the health. And the St. Paul's Episcopal Church will have the food. All and right. I think that's one of the excellent things about these days is that it's so difficult for people to navigate resources. So think about 
when you have to get something done and you have to go to three different places, that's hard for you. Well, think about if you didn't have a home and you went someplace to get assistance and they said, well, actually, you need to go over to social services, which is across town. Well, you don't have a home. You might not have transportation. So now you have to get across town to do that. So this day brings all those services into a centralized location so people can get what they need in one stop and they're not getting shuffled throughout a bunch of different agencies. So that's one of the great things about these days. And well, we're just I, yeah. really glad that Queen Anne's County is you know, taking this on and going to put on a Make a Difference Day this year. It's going to be wonderful. That's excellent. Well, I want to thank you for coming in today and explaining about your roles in this, uh, this wonderful project that you're doing. Uh, it, can the can the community at large um, help you in any way? I mean, uh, if people wanted to volunteer to help out, I think you had mentioned earlier you needed people that could uh, act as like a tour guide through this process. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? Okay, um, I it is four one zero seven five eight eight thousand, and just ask for Heather Andrews or Heather Andrews dot Maryland spelled out um, dot gov. And again, that's 410-758-8000. Uh, the I mean, the communities not only can volunteer that day, but we're also asking for donations, monetary donations. We're looking to give away hats, gloves, um, socks, and, you know, things like that. Um, so there are going to be several collection boxes of these different things. Your child may be coming home from, with, uh, from their school asking for these certain things and um, you know just trying to collect them so that at the end that our uh, guests can walk away with these resources. All right that's great so uh, again if people have things they want to donate clothing uh, they should call your number? They can and I can direct them to the to the right subcommittee chair. All right very mm -hmm. good very good is there anything else you'd like to tell us about uh, this program? Uh, I just think that also if people are looking for more information about homelessness on the Midshore, they can certainly contact me for information about the Midshore Roundtable on Homelessness. They can call me at 410-770-4801, and that's the number for Midshore Mental Health Systems. Very good. Thank you so much for coming in today. Yeah, thank thank you. you for having us.